Hi, and welcome to Prep Rally, brought to you by the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. So we're down to one game in the regular season for teams in Class 6A and 5A after Tuesday night's games. Now the fight for seeding going into Friday's games is going to be heated, especially in the 6A Central. Now in both the 6A West and the Central, the number one seeds for both the boys and the girls, they are set. In the West, it's going to be Bentonville. They claim the top seed, while on the, in the Central, defending state champion Fort Smith Northside Lady Bears are the number one seed. Now, it's going to take a math genius to figure out the number two seeds in the Central on both sides. There's a four-way tie or potential four-way tie on the girls' side, while on the boys' side, it's even crazier as there could be a five-way tie, depending on Friday's games. Now, on the girls' side, Cabot, Conway, Bryant, and North Little Rock all have a shot at that coveted number two seed. Now, why is that number two seed important? Because you get a first round bye at the 6A state tournament next week in Bryant. So that seed is huge. Now on the boys side, five teams are still in the mix for that spot. Conway, defending state champion Fort Smith, Northside, Bryant, Cabot, and Little Rock Central all have a shot at that number two seed going into Friday's games. Now in the 6A West, the Fayetteville girls, they're going to be the number two seed even though Springdale Harbor could technically tie for second with the win against Fayetteville on Friday. However, Fayetteville owns the tiebreaker, so regardless of the outcome of Friday's games, the Harbor girls will be the number two seed. What a tremendous turnaround for Harbor this year, a team that lost about 20 games last season to be in position to be in that top two in the West. A huge, huge turnaround for Harbor. Now, on the boys' side, Tuesday night, the Springdale Harbor boys, they handled their business, and they locked down the number one seed in the 6A West and the conference championship in Tommy Defenbaugh's first season as a head coach for the Wildcats. They beat Rogers High 62-53, and obviously Coach Defenbaugh was all smiles after the game. Uh, to, to win a conference championship is special, right? But well, it's, it's always one of your goals to win the state, win the conference, not lose a home game. Uh, have a winning record. All those things were our goals uh, from the very start. So uh, for, for us to accomplish this and, and for the, our kids to stick together and I always talk to them about hanging in there all and working hard and playing together and I thought at the last part in that fourth quarter I thought we exemplified a lot of teamwork. Yeah we made some mistakes but we kept each other up. We pat each other on the back. We pat each other on the butt and therefore we just persevered and hung in there and to come up here rogers is a really good team coach frazier class guy class guy um very very good coach very very good team for us to come in here and win like that it's and win the conference on top of it it's a it's a, it's a huge uh, feather in our cap now although the van buren girls are not in a battle for a top two or three seed they are still in a fight for a state tournament berth and they took a huge step on Tuesday night towards securing that. They beat Bentonville West 42-35. Lady Pointers coach Chris Bryant praised his team after that. Of, of us defensively, and we know we, we didn't have a chance to win on the road in this league if you give up you know, 74 points. So proud of our kids for buckling down after giving up that 18 points in the uh, first quarter to hold them to 17. The remaining three showed that they, uh, they took it uh, personal and, and were intent on give us an opportunity to win the game with, with defensive stops. And then some opportunistic free throw shooting in the second half. Uh, Bailey Woodard, young lady off the bench for us, junior number 12, she's had a phenomenal first half and uh, kind of keyed it, kept it going in the second half by getting to the free throw line on a foul three and nailing all three free throws. So she did a great job, kept us in the game when we were wobbly and uh, we're fortunate to have her. And, and Really uh, pleased that we've improved our chances to, to qualify for our sixth straight state tournament. So Friday's schedule, there's no other way to describe it. It is huge, especially in the 6A Central. The girls' side, four teams with a shot at that number two. The boys' side, five teams with a shot at that number two seed. So big, big games in the Central. Here's a look at the rest of Friday's schedule in 6A and in 5A.
Now, for teams in 4A and below, they are into their second week of postseason play with regional tournaments going on. Now, regionals started this week on Wednesday, and they will continue through Saturday's championship games. And next week, all classifications from 6A to 1A will begin tournament play. Down in 3A in Charleston, that state tournament will begin on Tuesday. All other state tournaments will begin on Wednesday. And here is a look at where the various state tournaments will be played all across the state next week. And, of course, we will have coverage of all postseason play in the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette as well as online at nwaonline.com. We're going to take a break right here and leave you with some of the amazing images from this week's sporting events. If you see a photo that you would like to purchase, you may do so online at nwaonline.com slash photos. And when we come back, we'll recap last weekend's state wrestling tournament and we'll also recognize this week's NWADG Athletes of the Week. The State Wrestling Tournament was held last weekend in Little Rock and close to 700 Arkansas wrestlers competed for state titles, including 137 girls. Now, if you remember, last year, the Arkansas Activities Association approved sanctioning a separate girls division in the state. So the first all-girls state tournament was held on Thursday. 137 competed in Little Rock. So, Cersei won the team title, but Van Buren's Violet Summers became the answer to a trivia question. She was the first girl to win a state championship in the new division. She won the 106-pound weight class on Thursday. as She won by disqualification when her opponent bit her on the arm, leaving teeth marks on her arm. And this wasn't even a steel cage match. Wow. Bentonville won its third straight state title on the boys' side. They beat Bentonville West. Bentonville scored 283 points, West 207.5. So it was Bentonville winning their third big title of the season. They won the dual state tournament two weeks ago. They won the 6A West tournament last a couple weeks ago. And now they won the state title. And they had five Bentonville wrestlers. Now they captured state championships. And Jake Adams, he won his third straight state title at 132 pounds. Now, everybody knows Greenwood is a dominant football program that carried over to the mat last weekend, and they won their first state wrestling title. They scored 238 points, and five Bulldogs claimed individual titles. So congratulations to all the wrestlers in this growing sport in the state. This wrestling has been sanctioned since 2009, and the numbers have doubled since then with no signs of slowing down. So wrestling, a big, big time growing sport in this state that's just going to continue to get bigger and bigger. Now this weekend, championship moved to swimming and indoor track. The state swim and dive meet, it will be held Saturday in Bentonville at the Bentonville Community Center. Now there will be two different uh, divisions going on. The 6A swimmers will compete early in the day on Saturday, and then the schools in 1A up to 4A will compete Saturday afternoon again at Bentonville Community Center. 
for the state indoor track meet that will be held at the Randall Tyson Track Center at the University of Arkansas on Saturday. So you'll want to get out and see some of that and we'll have full coverage of all of that in the weekend editions of the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Now this week we honor our Athletes of the Week. Charles Easterling of Bentonville West and Kelsey Barnett of Ozark are this week's Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette Athletes of the Week. Now Easterling, he won his second straight wrestling title last weekend and completed a 46-5 and season. He was also named the most outstanding wrestler among the lighter weights at the state wrestling tournament. Now Barnett, she played a huge role in Ozark's run to the 4A4 Conference Tournament Championship. Now this is the same Ozark team that went 3-9 and nine in the 4A4 during the regular season, but you know what? That didn't matter when the, when the tournament time came around because everybody plays with a clean slate in Ozark a number six seed coming in swept the conference tournament. They went 4-0, and won the conference tournament, and claimed a number one seed at this week's 4A Regional in Berryville. So congratulations to Charles and Kelsey, this week's Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette Athletes of the Week. Now, each Tuesday in the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette, we select the Boys and Girls Athlete of the Week. For more on this story and on these two players, check out the story at NWA Online. Dot com. And that's it for this week's edition of Prep Rally. We'll be back next week with coverage of all the regional basketball tournaments. We'll have a little preview of the state tournaments that will be going on next week. And we'll also recap the swim and dive state championships and the indoor track. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week on Prep Rally.